Hi. From the beginning of time and throughout scriptures, we see God talking about the different aspects of his relationship with us. He reveals himself as our creator, he's our Lord, our savior. Then it all graduates to him being our father. And then he calls us sons and daughters. And that's beautiful, but there's more. If you haven't yet subscribed to this channel, I'll be glad if you do that now by clicking on the red subscribe button below. So let's get right into it. Like I said, God is our creator, our Lord, our savior and father. In John chapter 15, however, Jesus introduced an interesting new dimension about his relationship with us. He called us friends. In verse 15, he was speaking to his disciples and said, I no longer call you servants because a servant doesn't know his master's business. Instead, I call you friends. That's really deep and it does make you wonder why after the extensive relationship we already have, does he have to introduce a new dimension and call us his friends? This got me thinking and then I realized something. True friendship is actually one of the strongest relationships there is. You know, it's not bound by any covenant like marriage. It's not bound by blood like what you have in the family between brothers, sisters, between parents and their children. But it is strong and enduring all the same. True friends, they can talk and talk about anything. I think even you may have experienced a true friend who is there with you through thick and thin. Other people may gossip behind your back, but a true friend is bold enough to always tell you the truth. Do you know you can spend hours with a friend, has it happened to you before, talking about deep things and the superficial? You actually hang out because you love being with the person and not because you have anything to gain. Even the Bible says that there is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. And then check out most marriages that really work. It's because the husband and wife are friends. A big question is this. Why would a man choose to spend time with his friends rather than his wife? And that happens so often. Why do teenagers tell it all to their friends in school or wherever rather than to their parents. I think it still boils down to this issue of friendship. Maybe the lesson here for every one of us is that parents should work harder at being friends with their children and the same with husbands and wives. A true friend is someone your soul is knit with, someone you have a connection with and you can't even say why. So maybe that's why Jesus came with an angle of friendship when he sat with his disciples as he neared the end of his time on earth. He had every other form of relationship with them, but now he wanted this new bond. He wanted to be friends with them. I think God wants the same with us, even now. Not just a few hours in church on Sunday morning, and that's all that some of us give to him. Rather, he wants us to spend quality time with him, to tell him everything, to worship him from our hearts, to sing praises, and also choose some quiet moments to hear him speak. God is eager to share deep secrets with us, but how can we hear him if we don't draw near to him? The main reason God created us is for friendship and a relationship. And I guess that's why he didn't make us robots and he gave us a free will to choose to love him or not. The question now is that, do you love God? If you do, God wants your friendship. He said, draw near to me and I will draw near to you. Let's take note of this and respond. Friends talk, they spend time together, they bond, they love. It's a two-way thing. God loves you deeply, and that's not a cliche. It's reality. And so it's time to love him back and be his friend. God bless you, and keep seeking God's heart.